Hey guys. So as you saw in the title of this video, we're just going to go over what barrel should you consider when either buying or building a rifle and why certain barrels are better for certain applications, right? So the two barrels obviously are going to be the most well-known or popular uh, as far as material goes. This is a Chrome Molly Verdium, if I'm saying that right, or uh, CM. V is typically how you see it a lot. Uh, this particular barrel is from Ballistic Advantage. It is their SPR uh, profile, similar to that of what you would see in like a Mark 12 build. Uh, heavy, heavy profile with an 18 inch barrel. So again, typically what you would see in like a Mark 12 build uh, as far as profile goes. This is my version of a Mark 12. Right, this has a stainless steel Roscoe manufacturing barrel in it. Again, it's that Mark 12 profile, so very similar to this. Both are a one and seven twist. The stainless steel is a 223 wild, while the ballistic advantage is going to be a 556 chambering. So, it, uh, this does allow it to shoot 223 and 556. Obviously, this is also 223 556, but because of the wild chambering, it does allow a better, uh, more tighter fitting of the round to the chamber with a 223 wild or a 223 caliber uh, as compared to a 556. There can be just a, a slight deviation in how well that, that seats in there. First thing I want to note is that the, as far as these, all the parts and products that you see on this, none of this is provided to me. Everything was purchased with my own money. Second thing, both barrels did go through the break-in process recommended per specs or per the manufacturer, right? So they went through their, the manufacturer's recommended break-in process to make sure the barrels are broken and ready to rock and roll uh, for the best the best accuracy you're gonna be able to get out of those barrels. All right, so in this testing, both barrels were used in this build. This is a Aero Precision matched receiver set with a BCM quad rail. So you're gonna have a steel barrel nut on there. And then we have a Geisley SSAE trigger in it, right? Now, and then both uh, barrels used a different bolt carrier and we are clear on this, but the Roscoe Manufacturing, I went with their, I, it is their phosphate bolt carrier because their bolts are matched to the barrel, right? Ballistic Advantage does not match them to the barrels or the receiver extensions, right? But I went with a Toolcraft nickel boron. So both of them have a Carpenter 158 uh, bolt just as far as specs go on all this. I am going to go over a target and talk about what we saw in differences as far as overall MOA out of that. Now with the testing, I also did use the same muzzle device. It's a Griffin Armament 3 prong uh, muzzle device that I used for the testing. So both, both barrels had this muzzle device installed for the test, the testing. All the shots were fired from a seated bench position. Weather conditions, at least as far as what the weather was saying, weather apps were saying at the time, were very incredibly similar. Same scope, again, same setup. We're gonna start going over differences here, right? As far as the Chrome Molly goes, one reason a person might choose this is the barrel life that you typically get out of a 4150 Chrome Molly is typically going to be much longer than say a stain a four a 416 r stainless steel uh it just has to do with through the heat and the pressures that the chrome molly is going to outlast it as far as the number of rounds you're going to be able to put through it before you see your moa drastically open up and what will happen is if you're typically if you're using that you will start to see those those groupings open up ever so slowly, right? But you're on average, typically a person sees around 10,000 rounds before 
uh, crow molly really kind of goes off and needs to be uh, thrown out or swapped out. Uh, stainless steel, you're, you're typically going to see maybe 10,000. It all depends obviously on ammo for both situations and applications. But what will happen is your, your stainless steel is going to stay in a nice, relatively good grouping throughout its life. And you'll know when it goes bad because you're going to go from a, a solid grouping to just opening up all together and, and being done. Where the chromoly, like I said, it's, it's going to stay relatively good early on and it'll slowly, slowly open up until finally you're at a place where you're getting a very large grouping at 100 yards and realize that, hey, the barrel has finally given up, right? It's, it's time for a new one. But you are going to get a lot longer... Uh, round count through a chrome molly than a stainless steel so that depending on what you're thinking as far as material goes if you want if you're expecting or wanting to do a lot more high round count or mag dumps something like that a chrome molly is going to be a better option where a stainless steel is not really meant for mag dumps high round counts uh, in that sense just because it is more of a it is geared more towards precision uh, barrel or steel. Go ahead and go over accuracy and why that might be a factor based on what you're considering in building. These down here, just to make clear, these shots were just simply test shots, preparing or seeing where my impacts were before we came up and did our, our shots. Now, I wanna note each shot or each group was out of a three round magazine load so it is fed from a magazine uh, as far as that goes not single loads from the shots but up here we started with the lake city uh, 55 grain on the right on the left hand side it's going to be the ballistic advantage chrome molly and then on the your right hand side these here will be the stainless steel roscoe manufacturing so we had a three inch out of the 55 grain and a two and an eighth with the stainless steel. We did a Hornady match 73 grain, uh, 223. The Lake City was uh, 556, just to make uh, 55 grain, 556. Hornady was match 223, 73 grain. We had a two and a half MOA and a two inch MOA out of the stainless steel. Then going to the Black Hills, 556, 77 grain, open tip match. We had a three and a half inch group coming out of the Ballistic Advantage. And we had a three quarter inch group coming out of the Roscoe Manufacturing. Now that Black Hills load specifically, it's they call it the uh, MK262. So they geared that ammunition specifically for the Mark 12 type of build overall so they really specialized it for that so just as a note there uh, lastly we had the aac from palmetto state 77 grain 556 load uh inch and a half moa out of the chrome molly and an inch and an eighth out of the stainless steel so you can see especially depending on the load drastic improvement uh from one from one barrel material to the other. Not necessarily picking on one manufacturer or the other. This was not to compare manufacturers, but to compare barrel material. So I wanna make that, that clear. It was not to compare manufacturing, but barrel material. So overall, if you're considering, I want to get into long range, right? I want it to be a precision rifle. That is absolutely why you would go with a stainless steel, but the 416R specifically has to do with it does better in cold conditions. Like a lot of people will use it for coyote hunting. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to do like a clone build, right? But that R is important because it helps with cold weather conditions and not becoming brittle and things like that. Where if you're looking at, hey, I'm not looking for precision. I want something that gets me basic accuracy, knowing that it's just a run and gun rifle or run and gun barrel, right? That is where the chrome molly comes in. So really knowing the purpose in which you're building, gearing, 
gearing that rifle up for is going to be very important because if you're just if you're just looking to dump rounds down range i would argue save the money on the stainless steel do a chrome go with the chrome molly but if you're looking i want precision i want accuracy then that's where i would go the 416r with the thoughts of knowing i'm not going to be dumping mags uh to burn burn this barrel out i want i want this to remain accurate so just wanted to share that information with you based on my experience with these two different uh, materials, especially considering the same profile, same twist rate, and same barrel length as far as those similarities go, and show you what the differences can be. That was what led me to the 416R being the legit barrel that I went with uh, as compared to something a little more budget friendly like a Chromoly in that sense. So. Wanted to share those considerations. Hope this helps. If you have recommendations, questions, uh, anything like that going forward or with any of this, please drop it in the comments. Uh, and if you have more information to share, same thing. Drop it in the comments. Uh, share, like, and subscribe.